in the work of Jesus yeah. and he saves us. The best way to, to be saved is to surrender okay. and let him do uh, his perfect work in us. And so Isaiah 43 says this, I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no saviour. Apart from me, there is no saviour. See, faith is to trust into something apart from you. And it's him. It's Jesus. Amen. And that's where our faith begins to rise in the discovery that God so loved us that he sent his son for us. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses. Now, witnesses here means proof, evidence. Mm, mm. All right. You are the evidence mm. that God saves because mm. you're saved. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. You're the proof of it. Yeah. Uh, we vote well to believe that if God says it, that settles it. And you are who God says you are. What's that? Saved. Wow. You are the proof of it. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am He. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, when God actions a matter, right, who can reverse it? Isn't that awesome? When God actions a matter, it is irreversible. When Jesus declared it is finished, it is finished. Hallelujah. It's finished. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Beautiful. So what that means is as it pertains to your salvation, because of God through Jesus, you've believed into what God through Christ has done for you. You are saved and your salvation is irreversible. Amen. You can't reverse it. That's Amen. how saved you are. Yep. Nobody else either. Nothing else. Nothing you know about or don't know about can reverse the work of God. It is irreversible. irreversible. Because you are the righteousness of God and God has made you righteous, your righteousness is irreversible. You are such as you ought to be. Wow. Right with wow. God. Beautiful. And that rightness is irreversible. Hmm. Man. You weren't made right by your faithfulness. Wow. You weren't made right by your obedience. You weren't made right by your offering. You weren't made right by your sacrifice. You weren't made right by your Christian disciplines. You weren't made right by your prayer life. You weren't made right by your fasting. You weren't made right by your church attendance. You weren't made right by your giving. You weren't made right by, weren't made right by anything except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And on the basis of that, your righteousness is irreversible. You are such as you ought to be, which is the definition of righteousness. And on that basis, you are just. You are justified. Justification is the legal declaration for all eternity that you are such as you ought to be. What's that? Righteous. Hallelujah. Wow. And so your justification is irreversible because your righteousness is irreversible. Mm. Here's something else that's irreversible too. You are blessed. Oh. You are so profoundly blessed. Because God through Christ has blessed you. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And here's what else that means. Because your blessing is irreversible, you can't be cursed. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Amen. Oh, but I, I, I was told that, you know, if, that I can be cursed for a whole manner of reasons. Listen, did you believe into the cross of Calvary? Yeah. Yes. And do you know what Jesus declared at that place? Yes, what was that? It is finished. Yeah. yeah. Meaning everything as it pertains to the curse and the flaw of the human condition for a new creation is passed away. Behold, all things have become you. Yeah, yeah. you, my friend, are blessed. And Amen. that blessing is irreversible. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hence that he could say, as Christ is, so are we in where? This world. When? Now. Awesome. Believe it. Awesome. Believe it. Thank Believe you. it. You are blessed. You. Here's something else that's irreversible. You're forgiven. Yeah. You are forgiven. Amen. Because I ask, no, because Jesus' blood. Yes. You are forgiven. Amen. And your forgiveness is irreversible. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. You are forgiven. You are righteous. You are saved. You are blessed. You are all you will ever need to be. Jesus. Thank you. Because God is name. Isn't that awesome? 
Wow. Amen. I don't feel that faith is not a feeling. Mm. Faith is to trust into what God through Christ has done for you because your feeling is the basis of what you think you have done or have not done. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. And so, you know, this forces us. This is this completely disengages the human condition as it pertains to trying to accomplish something that's already been accomplished. You don't have to work to be righteous. You are righteous. You don't have to work to be blessed. You are blessed. You don't have to work to be accepted. You can't be more accepted than you are right now. You don't have to work on your identity. You are as such as you ought to be. What's that? A child of God. Jesus. Your place at the table as a son or a daughter is settled and finished. Beautiful. That's where you belong. Isn't that awesome? You are not a servant. You are not a slave. You are a son of the Most High. Isn't that awesome? Wow. wow. Take possession yeah. of your new creation reality. Because here's the thing, whether you believe it or not doesn't change the fact that it's a fact. Mm. <laughs> it's whether you believe it or not is whether you'll enjoy it and rest in it and live out of it. <clears throat> Rested soul is a beautiful thing. It's a peace. Isn't that awesome? And so that's it. But it forces us to reevaluate a lot of our old, you know, all those old religious cliches we used to just say amen and hallelujah at every time we heard them because we just thought, based on the fact that someone said it, that it's true. Yeah. Here's a good one for you. Let me just put it out there. And, and, and you might relate to it or you might not. It's one that I used to hear a lot. And it was like, you know, you, you work as hard as you can, you can. And then God will put the super on your natural. Oh, my friend, natural is the problem. <laughs> God will put a super on your natural. Yeah, I used to get that, and so we work and work and work and wonder why. What, what, what's the problem? Right, God don't need your natural. He came to deliver us from the natural. <laughs> and to live his life in us. Beautiful. What does it take to be a good Christian? I've asked it before, but let me ask it again. What does it take to be a good Christian? Think about it. Take a minute to ponder. Make a little mental list in your mind. You probably are right now. You might have two or three things, maybe 20, if you've got a pretty heavy religious background. <laughs> <laughs> what does it take to be a good Christian? You know what it takes? Christ. Yeah? Yes. Good word. That just disengaged the natural. Because we had just built ourselves a little religious list mm, mm. to perform towards something that you've already been made. Mm. Hey, Christ. And we rest in His righteousness and live out of what He's done. But it's subtle, this stuff. It's really subtle. Yes. All right, But the subtleties become more amplified when you have a greater discovery and revelation of Jesus in your life. Mm. He's awesome. Mm. And so that's it. Our natural is the nuisance. It's the nuisance, and we'll look at that a little bit. But So let me continue now uh, in the same chapter down to verse 18. Okay, watch this. Forget the former things. Ooh. See, I majored on your new creation status now because we're in the here and the now. <coughs> yeah. There's nothing like dwelling on the past to rob you of the power of the present. Yeah. And they're here and now to live out of that. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Two things. Forget the former things. Perceive the new thing. The new thing is what, not what you're doing. Not what I'm doing, not what anything else on the human level is doing. The new thing is what God Himself is doing and has done. That's the new thing. Right? Forget the former things. Let's just park a little grace bus up here for a minute. Forget the former things. Two alternative translations for this, just to help flesh it out of it. The complete Jewish Bible says this, stop dwelling on past events and brooding over times gone by. Mm, 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 mm. Here's the message. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be 
Present. Present. Wow. Beautiful. Be alert. Beautiful. Be present. Mm. Mm. Anything mm. that points you to the past mm. as a reference point to your present is not from God. Yeah. Anything that says you've got to go and do this or undo this or tidy up loose ends. Listen, when God finishes a thing, the loose ends are finished. Beautiful. Anything that points you to the past is not from God. Mm, good word. And you'll know it instantly because you'll lose your joy. Yeah. You get confused, you get anxious, you get a little bit concerned about your present situation. Mm. Alright? It's a distraction. Mm. And I don't think it can get any more clearer than the words that are right here, but it will try and, you know place greater emphasis on them that will let the Bible confirm Bible forget the former things what does that mean mm. eradicate them from your memory banks you have a new canvas upon which God is putting new thoughts new truths Beautiful. which become the basis of new realities mm. and that whole foundation is Jesus wow. and his love for you mm. alright I don't know what you think it might be but if there's anything from the past that still has power over you right now, you got to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> yeah, this is serious. All right, because it robs you of, of and we're going to see this, it robs you of the, the potential of the present that, that is in you. That's right. Everything you need is in you. Yeah, this is a biggie. This is a real biggie. You know what's stopping some of us from entering into greater levels of the enjoyment of God's grace is because we're unrested. And the reason we are unrested is we're still tied to issues in the past. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good word. Mm. So we're not free. Listen, for freedom Christ set you free. To enjoy the Christ life. Mm. Forgiveness is, is releasing yourself from that stuff. Mm. And it, it, actually it's an, it's an action of the divine nature because giving and forgiving essentially are the same things. It's a choice to let it go. Mm. Or to let that go. Or him go or her go. Or let you go. Yeah. Whatever you're holding against yourself. Be free. Mm. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free, be free in Jesus' name. Beautiful. Amen. See, oh, should I go there? Yes, yep. I should. <laughs> yep. See, if, if we're in the past, we drag people into the past. Yeah. Because it comes out of us. Yeah. And there's some people who don't want to be in the past, but we keep dragging them to the past because we're still in the past. Yeah, that's right. And people are going to come to you to go forward, not to go backwards. Good word. Okay, so the Hebrew author, right, he reiterates this point in a new covenant reality to a whole lot of people who live in the past. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So let me remind you what looking uh, unto means. Here's a word definition. Now, looking is this word here. And it's, there's two aspects to it. At first is turning the eyes away from. Mm. It's first turning the eyes away from, and it's turning the eyes towards. Good, good word. Fixing them. Fixture. Oh. Fixation. <laughs> Get fixated on a new thing. Mm. Right? Fixing. So, so to first, to, before you can fix, you have to unfix mm. yourself from whatever the stuff is and fix them on Jesus. Right? And so that's important. And then we have unto, which is this uh, Greek word here, which means to. It means what it says, right? Um, unto, into, to, towards. Mm. So that's a double emphasis, mm. essentially, in these two words that have been joined together that both mean, right, to. So you've got unfixed from, and then you've got look, look. Mm. I think he gave us two eyes for that reason, <laughs> just to reinforce the point. Got two eyes to look, look. 2020 vision is having both eyes on Jesus. See, so you, you, I just had this idea of cross-eyed Christian. <laughs> Forgive me if someone has that. Um, that's not. Yeah, you feel me? Right. 
they're going to be fixed on that now for the next two weeks. <laughs> I apologise, that's not my point, but I'm trying to make an illustration. You know, and so we, no, don't do it. <laughs> Walking around, cross-eyed, Christians, and we can't see clearly. Mm. We don't, we, everything is in a blur. Mm. We think we know what we, we're seeing, but we don't, really. Yeah. We're, we're taking a stab in the dark mm. about it, really. All right? And so, so, this principle here that we've seen is a double emphasis on looking unto, looking unto. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, completer, perfecter mm. of our faith. Only the complete man can complete. Mm. Only the perfect man can perfect. We looked at this last week, right? And it's Jesus, looking unto Jesus, right? And so everything that God has for us in this new creation spiritual <coughs> life, which is your reality, is received by faith. Mm. Amen. Faith originates and has its entire operation and existence, the realm of faith, Mm. is in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Beautiful. He is the author and the perfecter Beautiful. of our faith. See, I used to think faith was for me to fix my eyes on something and then just to believe, believe, believe I can do it. It's not faith. It's just effort. That puts my trust into me. Mm. Mm. Faith, like I said, locates our trust into somebody else. Mm. It takes it out of my ability and into the ability and efficiency of all sufficiency, Good right. who is Jesus, Good right. God revealed, right? That's what faith is for. Now what inspires faith? It's only one thing that inspires faith. It's the love of God. Amen. God's love inspires a response. Faith. You entrust yourself to someone you know loves you. And no one has loved you like God has loved you. He loved you so much he sent his son for you. The cross of Calvary is the example of love from the person of love. Amen. is the expression of love to you. Amen. You can trust that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, so anything that points you towards Jesus is a faith idea. Mm -hmm. that, that's the faith life. It begins in Jesus, right? And so, so, so to walk by faith or to live by faith essentially is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's really a uh, bottom line definition. To be Beautiful. a great man of faith is not running off trying to do a whole lot of stuff for God. No, great faith, the faith life, the spiritual life is actually resting in the great things that God through Christ has done for you. Wow, disengage. All effort, all sense of self sufficiency, self reliance, all the words that have self. As the prefix, mm. that stuff disengage. Yeah, that's the, you know what? That is the sin issue. To be honest, it's not what's happening on K Road right now, mm. Mm. and all that stuff, all, all this gang stuff that everyone majors on. That's not. That's no drama to God. Mm. Jesus went straight down there, and they loved. They responded to him. No, no, you know. The issue that got all this problem started was the self of Satan based on his pride and his arrogance to say, no, I can do that. Mm. I, it's, it's I, the I thing, mm. which is in Greek, ego. Yeah. yeah, that's where all the problem begins. And so disengage the I and be reliant on I am. Yeah. Amen. Good work. And I am, the great I am, mm. Of the old revealed himself to all of us of the new in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Trust. So faith, we, whenever we're looking at Jesus, faith rises. It cannot help but rise. Yeah. That's why the enemy is, is not anti-God, it's anti-Christ. Because <laughs> yeah. you can be all about God but completely deflated in faith. But when God is understood by you through the person and the work of Jesus, faith rises. Mm. Why? Because love is your experience. Mm. What he's done for you. And hence, we see this thing. Jesus, remember last week, is the wellspring of God. Springs up. Look, it springs up. Behold, it's springing up. It's springing forth. Up leaping is what the Bible means. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? And it's in Jesus. 
And so that's what Jesus reveals, the grace and the mercy. Grace, here we go. The unearned, I'm going to say it every time I get a chance. Grace is the unearned, so there's no I. The undeserved, so there's no I. The unmerited favour of God. Beautiful. That's grace. Amen. So the, to the extent you are conscious of Jesus, you will be conscious of God's love. Mm. So it means to abide in God's love essentially is to abide in the consciousness of the God that Jesus reveals. Mm. What he's done for you. Mm. I'm forgiven because of Jesus. Mm. I'm saved because of Jesus. Mm. Faith starts to rise. Yeah. I'm blessed because of Jesus. Yeah. I've been delivered because of Jesus. Mm. I'm a new creation because of Jesus. I'm eternally saved. Faith starts to rise. Wow. I'm eternally saved because of Jesus. Wow. I'm saved because of Jesus in spite of my failures, in spite of my sin, in spite of my faults, in spite of my hang-ups. He came and saved me where I was at, not where religion says I had to be. Amen. All right? And so, that's some perfect people entrusted to a perfect Savior. Mm. And He does the work of perfection. Pure. In us. Amen. Amen. He's awesome. Mm. So a sure indicator, just as a little footnote, a sure indicator that one's eyes has come off Jesus and he's no longer in the faith life is stress, worry, anxiety, and concern. <laughs> and then in that place we are inclined to want to start to control the situation. Is it? Whatever it is may be, that is the object of that concern. And it's at that very point there that we look away from and look towards Jesus. Amen. See, the rubber really hits the road on this in the middle of it when the stuff hits the fan. Can we be, oh, let's just get real up. We played church for many years, some of us. Let's just get down. Yeah. Get real. It's yeah. when this, it's just like, oh, God. That's awesome. Because because we've centered on the right place for starters. Mm. Help. Help me. Help. All right? That's a beautiful prayer, Lord. Okay? Um, so then forget the former things. That's the first one. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am doing a new thing. Who's doing it? Who's doing it? See, religion says, I am doing a new thing. Okay, the real thing is, look what God is doing. Look what God has done. Look what he is going to do. Because I'm entrusting it. Into his son. That's the certainty of your hope. Mm. It's not wishful thinking, it's an established fact. Mm. So the heart can rest and mm. peace comes. Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 2, I have determined mm. not to know anything. Mm. Now that's in the context of a lot of things mm. religious things, social things, political things. Yep. Economic things. Except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That word I have determined is a Greek word, krinos, which means uh, a, a forensic determination. Mm. It's an exacting <laughs> decision. There's no grey area. Mm. Right? There's no room for reason. Or second thought, as it pertains to the principle that the apostle of the new covenant predominantly letters is saying, I have determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ and the success of the cross. And that's foolishness to the arrogant, wise human. But that is the power of the gospel, is the grace of God revealed to us in the person and the work of Jesus. That's our message. That will always be our message. Lest you see Jesus, there's nothing here to see. It's all about Him. He's awesome! You don't want to live your life vicariously, meaning through 
the efforts of others or the so-called standing on others because Jesus came so you, so you could relate to him directly. Mm. One of my favourite scriptures to further underline the point, Galatians 2.20, will let Bruce yeah. unpack it for us. With Christ, the I is disengaged. I have been crucified. With Christ, I have been crucified. It is no longer I, right, who lives. But there, this, I love this, but there lives in me Christ. Wow. And that life I live in the sphere of my humanity, I live it by faith. Mm. So it relocates me out of my humanity into divinity, which is Jesus. Beautiful. It's what faith is for. Beautiful. Right? So the life I live in the sphere of the flesh, Paul's not denying that he's contending with the human condition and all of our, our flaws and all of our inadequacies and all of our intricacies and our delicacies and all of our seas. <laughs> That's still there. He's not denying that. But the life he lives, he lives entrusted into the person and the work of Jesus. Beautiful. Right? By faith I live it. So where does the faith life begin? We've already answered it, but let's reinforce it. Which faith is in, unto, towards the Son of God who loved me. See, here's the love action that inspires our faith response. Cause and effect. The effect of our faith is caused by His love. See, we think God's love is caused by our action. God will love me if I love Him. God will be good to me if I am good to him and others. God will bless me if I first bless him. No, you've got it exactly around the wrong way. Mm. And we've been taught that in church. Because we've used the framework of the law as the basis of our understanding yeah. Yeah. towards God. Yeah. And as a result, we've always been defeated and deflated and completely faithless and yeah. scared. Mm. All the while pretending we're happy and blessed. So it's the other way around. Love is not that we love God. It is that God, through Christ, has loved us. And we know that love because he sent his son to die our death. Amen. Thank you. So we could enjoy his life. Amen. So by faith I live it, which faith is in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He loved me and gave himself freely for me. Which faith is in the son of God. Faith entrusts ourselves entirely to God. Through Christ. Mm. Every moment of every day. Now I know I know, we can coast through a week and not have given it much regard. Yet we face so many things in the course of a week when we could have or should have. Mm. It's, us, uh, it's um, amplifying our consciousness of God in our everyday life. Through Jesus. And the, and the, the polar opposite of that, and this is vanity, it's it's madness, it's futility, is entrusting ourselves. Mm. And we know we've entrusted into ourselves. And we can say we're resting, but really we're not. Mm. <laughs> yeah, how do you know? Anxiety. Yeah. But I'm resting. We know the theory of grace, but our our actions betray our theory. Mm. What's that? I'm still trying to... I'm worried, I'm concerned, I'm stressed. It means I, I sort of believe God, but... but mm. Mm. Sort of trust God, but yeah, yeah. And so the the uh, the, the experience is one of uh, I think our our Christianity is one of growing in greater consciousness of His love, which will equate to greater trust in His love. And all of that is discovered in the person of Jesus Christ. Not our effort. We live in an age of information technology, right? Um, which sort of, uh, we live our life based on the information we receive. And we receive information from all directions. There's a lot of stuff that's happening. We don't need to go down that road too much. But the fact is, based on the information received, we form our decisions, which then inspire our action or inaction, right? Is that fair? And we've come out of a reality based on our preconditioning, 
Um, and all of our experiences that begins in formative years and through education, um, that we take control of things ourselves. And, and our, our security is in what we can do. Mm. Which makes it then a bit of a challenge at that point when we are so want to do something to entrust him to do it. See, we can go, the battle is the Lord's, but we're still battling. Yeah. And so we get this tension or we get this conflict in our thought life in terms of do we really, really trust him? And he understands that, which is why he meets us where we're at. All the time. It's beautiful. However, he wants us to, to, to grow in more consciousness of it because he does, because he so yeah. loves us. Beautiful. Okay, and so then we receive this information, but now dear new creation, son and daughter of the Most High. Amen. We take our information from another place now. We're informed by Jesus. So, so in any given situation, right, whatever the situation may be, that situation no longer informs us as the basis of the thoughts we then generate and the actions that come out of that. No, Jesus informs us. And so it can begin in a real baseline area like your identity. Uh, I just don't feel good enough. Well, you may have had someone say that to you and that's impacted you and it starts to shape your inside world and begins to influence how you engage with others because you're now inclined to perform to be accepted by others because mm. you don't feel worthy. Mm. Now your worthiness is defined by, by their response to you and at mm. the moment that they stop providing you what you're trying to get, you feel rejected and you close down. And now you're living in the past, right? And so now I receive my information from the person and the work of Jesus. How worthy am I? So worthy that God sent his only begotten son. Wow, beautiful. And he revealed himself to you because he loves you. Now that defines your self-worth. Thank you, Jesus. Which speaks louder. And now you're more secure and you're standing. The relationships become more healthy because you're not trying to get out of someone something that only comes from God. And so you can love them healthily. And you can engage healthily. And you are flowing as opposed to trying to, to receive and be filled from a place into a space that God himself fills. Beautiful. Which was the situation with the woman with... At the well, five husbands trying to fill a space that only God could fill, and she still felt empty. She's on her sixth man, which is fulfillment on a human level, until she met the seventh man, the perfect man, the complete man, who filled her completely. And we know she was filled because she came with an empty vessel. She was an empty vessel, coming with an empty vessel. She left a filled vessel, leaving behind her empty vessel. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's filled her right. How do we know? She just starts flowing, bro. <laughs> Come see a man. Yeah. Come see a new thing. Yeah. Come see a new thing. It upsprings. So now, right, she's free. She's secure. Mm. She's whole. She's not inclined now to be susceptible to players because mm. she can't get played. Because <laughs> she's Beautiful. Amen. Now she can flow. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. But she met the wellspring of God, who is Jesus. Now she's filled, right? And now He becomes the object of her her trust. And so God. So that's just the identity. But as it pertains to your forgiveness, now I don't care what religion has told you. You're informed by Christ, my yeah. friend. You're forgiven. Yeah. In terms of your righteousness, I don't know where you get your information from. And we've got it from random places, but now we are informed by the person and the work of Jesus. Wow. We are righteous. As it pertains to your any accusation that would impact on whether you think you have salvation has been addressed in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Because the sin debt has been paid. Therefore, there's nothing to fear. Because fear is to do with punishment. But perfect love casts out for all fear, yeah. and his name is Jesus. Yeah. As it pertains to the blessing, I don't know what information you've received. And there's a lot of uh, religious teaching out there that would say that you are only blessed on the basis of your effort, mm. what you do for God, 
Well, that is not the information I've received from Jesus. Because I'm blessed because of what Jesus has done for me. And I cannot be cursed. And I'm a blessing not to get blessed, but because I'm blessed. Beautiful. The grace life is one of unmerited favor from the person of unlimited resource. All in the economy of his divine love. First cause, uncaused. It's God just being himself. What's that love? As you are. So what informs us? Jesus, his grace, his mercy, his love, his favor, his blessing. His life, yeah. it's all on Him. It is all in Him. Conversely, you can receive information that turns you inward. Mm. And now your spiritual lungs are quickly being deflated. Mm. You're self-centered. You're sin-conscious. Mm. Which makes you works-conscious. Mm. Which makes you guilt-conscious. Which makes you condemnation-conscious. But if Christ informs me, there is therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Be free. Beautiful. Come on. Circumstances no longer inform me. Christ informs me. Here's where the rubber hits the road in times of crisis. We really are at the end. It's the crisis. It's when circumstantial information overload starts to overwhelm us. This is too hard. Maybe even too hard for God. Or maybe I know God is able, but my doubt is whether he is willing. Because mm. maybe there's been some failure in my part. See now self-conscious. Mm. And your spiritual lungs begin to empty themselves of the air or the spirit life of God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then it shows on our countenance. Yeah. And so... We don't want to finish here. And see, that's why the enemy's goal is just to distract you. Yeah. Yeah. Just wants to get your eyes off Jesus. That's all he's got to do. And he's done. You can toddle off now and harass someone else for the distraction. That's all is to get your eyes off Jesus. Get your eyes off Jesus. So let me finish out of Nehemiah chapter 8. This is beautiful. See, where does our strength come from? And the Bible tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If he can rob you of your joy, he can deplete you of your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is is my strength, meaning my joy comes from the Lord. Oh, amen. My joy comes from what Jesus has done for me. Beautiful. My joy comes from the promises of God that are all yes and amen in Christ. Jesus. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Beautiful. The joy Hallelujah. of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Hallelujah, all right. Nehemiah 18, then Ezra said to them, Go your way. What's our way? Who is the way? Who's the truth? Don't you love the grace lens? We just put it straight over the top and then we see the stuff. Go your way. Eat the rich festival food. Drink the sweet wine. Who's our festival food? You heard about it. It's Jesus. Eat and drink. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Receive. That means receive. Receive into yourself His goodness, His love, His grace, His mercy. And here we go. And send portions to Him for whom nothing is prepared. See, grace is the gospel for the completely unprepared. Yeah. Beautiful. You didn't come prepared. Amen. I've got nothing to prepare Amen. myself with, to be honest. I'm completely undone. Mm. Beautiful. That's awesome. Because grace is the gospel for the unprepared. His unmerited favor is for those who can't prepare themselves with meritedness. Mm. If that's a word. All right? So that's it. For whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And what was the day that God made holy? In Genesis, the day of rest. Mm. Who's the person of rest? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Now here we go. And do not be worried. Do not be worried. For the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. So the Levites quieted the people 
quiet, quieted the people, saying, be still, rest, for the day is holy. Do not be worried. The fact that he had to say, they had to say be quiet, means that the unrest was manifested in the complaint. Complaints. Right? It's interesting. So, what is it that made the people worry? Thanks for asking. We don't even need to go back one verse. You ready? Nehemiah 8 verse 9b. For all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the Lord. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, wherever there is law, there is demand. Amen. Wherever there is grace, there is supply. Amen. You're not in a demand dispensation, you're in a grace dispensation. Amen. You're not in a season of demand, you're in a season of free favor and unmerited supply. Amen. Called the gospel of the grace of God revealed in the person Amen. and word of Jesus. Yay! So we know this. The battle is the Lord's. And so when we look at the crisis aspect, which might help us a bit this year, helps me, um, we see these wonderful truths generally unpacked at a point of crisis for Israel. And in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, we see the people and the mother of all crises. They are between um, the um, Egyptian army, those guys are merciless, and a big body of deep water. All right, so I've got a situation. I need help. And here's what Moses says, Exodus 14, verse 13. Do not be afraid. Deactivate your human condition as it pertains to what you think you need to do. In other words, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Who's doing the work? Who's doing the work? What's our part? See it. Which, who will accomplish it? Who will action it? Who is the action in this situation, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. We've been here before. Now, you know what hold your peace means? Can I say that verse there again and use the, the, the deeper intent? The Lord will fight for you, and you shall shut your mouth. <laughs> That's what it actually means. Be quiet, be silent. Oh, hold your peace. Let's get it's nice. It's a more great thing to say. Keep the complaint. Don't speak it because you have got an authority in what you say. Right? So hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Just have a picture. Move on. So we know salvation, by definition, is Jehovah is salvation. Jesus. So what, what, what Moses essentially is saying here is see Christ in the center of this crisis. Yeah. Don't see the crisis. See Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. If we brought it all down, that essentially is what it's saying. See Jesus in the midst of your drama, in your crisis. Beautiful word. That's what he wants us to do. Be still, hold your peace, for the battle is the Lord. I'm tired of battling some stuff, man. What you battling? And you feel like you just can't. You can't win it. You've been battling it for ages. Or maybe it's just a real intense recent battle. Mm. Hold your peace, my friend. Be still, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. Beautiful word. Now, Ezra. Remember what we talked about, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Ezra, if we go back to the scripture in Nehemiah 8, then Ezra said to them, go your way, look at Jesus. Receive, feast on his goodness. Send portions to him who have nothing prepared for this day is holy to the Lord. And do not be worried for the joy of the Lord is your strength. There you go, my slide just gave away my punchline. Ezra means helper. That's the definition of Ezra's name. Help. Helper. Beautiful name, isn't it? Mm. Now, Ezra, help. Joy of the Lord, outcome. Ezra, help. Joy of the Lord, outcome. Beautiful. There's somebody else whose name is the helper. Yeah. Comfort. Mm. John 14, 16. Then I will ask my Father and he will give you another helper. He will be with you forever. You are not alone, my friend. Ever. He is the spirit of truth. And where the truth is, there is freedom. The word cannot, or the world cannot receive him. It does not see him or know him. You know him because he lives with you and will be in you. Wow. He is in you. Wow. Who's that? The helper. Wow. Your present help. You can never not be in his present help. Because mm. he's present. Why do you think he wants you to be present? Right. To be with your present helper. The helper is the Holy Spirit. Verse 26. The helper is the Holy Spirit. The Father will send them in my place. He will teach you everything and help you remember everything I've told you. In other words, the helper, his fundamental primary principle role is to point you to Jesus. So Ezra, helper, in this context, the joy of the Lord is my strength, the helper is the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, we've got to part this old religious idea that the Holy Spirit is here to convict you of your sin. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we used to be taught, right? I don't need help with that. <laughs> I don't need any help with that. No, I need help in that moment to see Jesus. Ah, now I've got a helper. To see that I'm the righteousness of God in Him. Yeah, because of what He's done for me. Yeah. Not my success or my failure. Yeah. To see His goodness when I feel like I don't deserve it. Yeah. Where to see His love when I feel unlovable. Mm -hmm. To see His blessing when I don't feel I should be blessed. Mm -hmm. To see His salvation when I feel unsavable. To see His salvation in a helpless situation. Mm -hmm. I need help to see Jesus in that moment. And you, my friend, have been given a helper. And that helper is in you. And he is the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's there to do. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So he helps you look at Jesus in spite of yourself. I need help with that. So we're not seeing God through the lens of our effort. We're seeing God through the lens of God's grace, who is the person and the work of Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And so the outcome is threefold. Yeah. Final scripture, Romans 14, I was thinking the last one, sorry, 14, 17. For the kingdom of God has not been supplied on a human level. Beautiful. But here we go. <coughs> Righteousness. Peace and joy. Peace and joy. Peace and joy. joy in the Holy Ghost. Isn't that awesome? Right. So here's the characteristics of one who is enjoying the help of the helper who is centered on Jesus. Righteousness. He is the person of righteousness. He supplies my righteousness. Peace. I have peace because he has provided it for me. That's real peace. When you receive a peace based on the victory of he who provides it. Because if peace comes by what I do, then my peace probably is limited. Mm -hmm. I'm more likely in a standoff than a victory. Mm. All right? But here we have the peace of, of God. And so we see these now, these emotional elements, which are postures of the soul. Mm. And the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, is righteousness, peace, and joy. And the joy of the Lord is our joy in the Holy Ghost. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Okay. So let me finish right here. I used the scripture about six months ago and I have forgotten it. 
And we are good at forgetting. Which is why we need to keep hearing. Because if this guy who does all the studies forgetting, man. <laughs> yeah. And that's why the scripture will make sense to all of us now in that con context. Philippians 3 verse 1. This is beautiful. What happen, ever happens, dear friends, whatever happens, whatever happens, be glad, rejoice in the Lord. In the Lord. Okay, so whatever happens is not the object of our trust. It's Jesus. Yeah. Whatever happens, dear friends, be glad, rejoice in the Lord. Whatever happens, dear friends, be glad, rejoice in the Lord. Whatever happens, be glad, rejoice in the Lord. Whatever happens, what could happen? Anything could happen. What has happened? Anything could have happened. And the apostle says, rejoice, be glad in the Lord, and strength will start to be your possession. Rejoice in the Lord. You feel deflated, you're feeling weakened by a situation, you're feeling helpless, rejoice in the Lord. Look to Jesus, look to what he's done for you, not what the situation is presenting. Jesus informs us, rejoice. Be glad in the Lord. And here's the bit that really buzzes me out. I never get tired of telling you this. Yeah. Yeah. And it is good. It is a good thing for us to hear it again and again and again and again. <laughs> and we could just keep that going. When we are hearing, we are feeding. We are receiving His goodness. When we are feeding... He is fighting. Behold, I make a table for you in the presence of your battles. When our tendency is to fight, feed. I love that. Break out a holy scone. A holy cracker. A holy Shabbat bread. A holy pizza crust. I don't know. Whatever's there. Because that's not the thing. That's right. Centering you now on the person and the work of Jesus. Beautiful. And, and it, there's nothing for you that he would not do. Amen. 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 Amen.